Welcome back to Port Macquarie Regional Stadium. And this one should be an interesting fixture here. An all Sydney lineup between the Eastern Suburbs Roosters and the Manly Seagulls. James Preston and Mark Tipple, former Australian representative and current Premier League assistance coach for the Central Coast Dolphins. Mark, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, James, as the rain starts to come down. That'll be interesting how it plays a part in uh, what we see on the field. It really wasn't forecast, uh, and we don't like it when it comes into our touch footy. Changes the game quite a bit, but uh, we'll see who's up to the conditions in this one. I've had some very choice words off air about the rain this morning, that's for sure. As a, a weatherman outside of calling touch footy, I am never particularly happy to see it come down, even if it does give me something to talk about on air. Die ball goes from right to left now. So Manly with use of the ball. No try in that opening set there from the Chooks. Wearing the white strip as Semi Rogers, arguably the game's best winger, pushes forward up over halfway. Last play now, and there we go, Mark Tipple. Already that wet stuff is causing a few problems. Yeah, straight away, Sarah Petey, obviously Australian women's open player, uh, drops that one straight, straight off the bat, as we've been mentioning the conditions. So if a player of that high calibre is struggling, um, you know, there's no hope for the rest of us. So big touch coming here and now pushing forward. Into the attack is Hallowell Quinn. Very sharp on day one. Still an opportunity here out wide for the Roosters. They turn it away once more and keep the footy moving here. Tomasiu now hops in an acting half. And there we go. So it's going to be a bit like heading to prison and dropping the soap, but fortunately with a better outcome, ultimately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, our team has the game next against West in the men's open, eh? Um, and you actually take into consideration, obviously, how slippery the ball is going to be and warm up um, and try to prepare as best you can. But it only started raining as this game started, and now the sun's coming out, James. Well, one Kylie Hearn has always said to me that wherever there is a touch football tournament, rain will follow. It's almost uh, inextricably linked. But thank goodness we're not getting anywhere near the amounts of rain this time last year when the event was cancelled, James. It's my first time back here in four years, actually. Oh, wow. And, um, I'm stoked to be back. It, I do think it is the best touch tournament in the world, and I've seen a couple. Um, so, yeah, just, just good to be here regardless. And it was crazy scenes last time we tried to get things happening here at Port Macquarie. Good hands, given the conditions, but a tough one to take. And I do remember the field. It was probably up around ankle or shin height at this point within about... Probably three or four hours of play commencing. Games were called, of course, off of the main stadium field to try and make sure that something could happen with it the following day. But everybody was in gumboots by night time. So pretty ridiculous scenes. At least we're not having that kind of weather up here for this weekend as we are in day two of a three-day tournament here for the New South Wales State Cup 2022 Championships. As Dybul drives hard of the line. Dybul with plenty of pace. Gets in behind them. Looking to link up. Oh, what a ball for Davis, that is. Dybul and Davis. Name me a more iconic duo. And do not even begin to mention white chicks. It just doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, Hannah Dybul, widely regarded as one of, if not the best player in the women's game, linking up with her Australian manly New South Wales teammate, Shelly Davis there for Manly's first try. If you're watching touch footy for the first time or you don't know too much about this Manly women's team, um, you may be living under a touch football rock because for the past decade they have been dominant and that's an example of why. Well, it does give me allusions to the Brisbane Broncos side throughout the 90s, which was basically the Queensland origin side running around. This is basically the New South Wales origin side that we're seeing here in Manly. A, sh a very a very big part of it, absolutely. Um, same same structures, you know. A lot of um, the best footy to come out of New South Wales has come from this Manly group. Good touch made there, just at the death as well. The Roosters were threatening four minutes into this contest, and it is one try to nil in favour of Manly. Lovely little try there for Rochelle Davis, but still more pressure coming here from the Chooks. Not a great ball though, delivered from Demaria. Um, the Roosters are kind of on the other end of the spectrum in terms of their developing and rebuilding program at the moment. Obviously missing, um, as we were talking off offline just earlier, Bella Slattery, 
their young superstar out with injury this weekend. So they've got veterans like Tony DiMaria and their captain, number seven, Gemma Squadrito, who will lead them around the park um, with a lot of enthusiastic youngsters. McDonald drops it off, and now they go once more here. Manly into the in-goal area, looking to link up with somebody. Anybody, they come late and somehow was able to evade the touch. I thought there was cover there initially, but... In the end, Jessica Nagy goes in for another try. She's already got a few earlier this morning. Yeah, another well, um, well-structured well scoop there. And number 12, Macy Carruthers goes through on the assist, gets her first assist for the game and Manly's second try. So work to do now for the Chooks. Down by two with five and a half gone. Of course, 30-minute matches here at the New South Wales State Cup for 2022. No half-time breaks. And when a try is scored, two sides changing ends. Hallowell Quinn fires the pass and then tries to redirect traffic. Out of acting half now. Must release. Great ball over the top. Now, if that's backwards, which I don't think it is, it'll be a try. And yes, there they go. They've called it late. It's a very close run thing. A nice pass, but just out of the hands forward. Halliwell Quinn, number 29 for the Roosters, one to look out for. She's threatened early. Bit of back chat from the ref because um, she ran this fake rooster play. Didn't give it to the uh, short runner, ran out the back, and unfortunately for her, ruled a forward pass, which she disagreed with enthusiastically, and the referee punished her uh, promptly. Next time I have an argument with someone at work, I'm going to say I disagreed enthusiastically. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mark Tibble. Quick hands here to Dybul. Oh, what a pass that is at speed. Somehow able to curve it around the defender. Dybul again, scheming. Such a dangerous player. Carly Banks believes she might be the most complete women's player there is at the moment. Davis firing it back there, and this time a little too far behind Dybul, but playing advantage. So another set to come here for Manly. It's crucial here that the Chooks hold out. Yeah, Absolutely. Just to stay in this one, to keep their heads up, stay confident. It's 2-0 after seven minutes. So they don't want this blowing out too early. Dybul tries to squeeze between a few defenders, but they did a good job there. Made sure they were watching the run. The siren made the touch. So back to that seven-meter mark they come now. Davis. Dybul again drops it off. And now attacking inside the seven. Great ball there and a nice line as well from Bella Geros. Once more tracked in from the link position and shut things down. Good defense from the Roosters here. They're holding firm for now. Nicholas drops it off. Now Davis. Davis crabbing across field. Quick hands here. Jeros promotes the footy. Oh, good step from Rogers back on the inside. Beat them all ends up. Three tries to nil. The Seagulls are soaring. Sammy Rogers, Australian women's open winger there, uh, scoring, stepping off the left. Well worked from the Manly players insider, Shelley Davis on the out. Um, but Sammy Rogers shown why she's known as the number one winger in the world there, James. So the Roosters well and truly behind the eight ball after seven and a half minutes of play. Three tries to nil. Work to do for them. Demaria in at acting half now and flings it back towards the middle here with Gemma Squadrito, the captain. Demaria, Squadrito and wrapping around now at Paces Irons, who's had a very good first day and tries to continue the work here on day two. But they stop them. So back to that seven metre mark they come now with Kewen. Demaria, quick hands from Irons. It's enterprising play, but there's just so much pressure in defence from Manly. There's no openings at all. Yeah, so so well developed in their structures. Um, everyone knows their game. Fantastic communicators. I'm giving them a wrap, aren't I? But they're deserving of it so far in this one. You got money on the Seagulls. <laughs> I would if I could. Wow. Okay. Well, that seems like a genuine conflict of interest. Thank you for that, Mark. <laughs> here comes Clifford moving forward. Well, they try to get the touch here. Either way, it's going to go to ground here and be a changeover for the Roosters. So it's an interesting one because there wasn't much pressure in defence. It was all scrambling, but unusual there for Manly not to pick them apart in that position. Yeah, I think the conditions coming into play again. Uh, Brittany Clifford, number six, 
a very dangerous ball player, super quick, and just couldn't find that final pass. Straight and hard they go up through the guts here with Matty Mitchell. Good metres on display. This is a good run here from Satcher. Satcher, oh, great hands there on display from Quarry. Run into touch, though, but not before she was caught on the last. So the changeover comes. One of our Singaporean referees, I think, joining us in this game, the young female. Not sure of her name, but it's awesome to have um, people coming far and wide for, for this tournament, James. You know, of course, we've seen Jason Begnall, for example, coming from the U.S., get involved and uh, quite a few other players travelling from interstate as well to link back up with their former sides. Here is Dybal. Oh, Dybal holding it for Nicholas and somehow got the touch there. Hallowell Quinn, who's had a big opening to this match so far. It was an important touch as we come inside the second third of this match. Dybal drawing and passing. A bunch of dummies there, but a good touch in the end from Chloe Smith. And they've thrown plenty at them so far, the Roosters. They've come up with a few results, but a lesser team would have really been feeling the pain at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. They're sticking in this well, and they are sticking to their structures. Their defense has been um, impressive as we're giving them a wrap, and Halliwell Quinn, who's been really good for them so far, drops that one. Um, and that's probably what they haven't done, James. They've been completing their sets and getting up the field. So giving Manly a chance with Dybal and Davis this close to the line is... Uh, Going to be a tough one for them to stop. Dival Davis equals danger. All the Ds at the moment. And Davis is caught, but another set to come here for Manly. So three tries to nil, 18 and a half to go. And they can ill afford to concede here, the Roosters. Davis taking oodles of time to restart things here. Eventually gets it back on track. And the touch comes up now. From Tomasiu, Dybal, back here once more to Maiolo, often undersung, but very clever player, Maiolo, or oh, quick hands there from Dybal, there was a touch in there though from Squadrito, that's the experience coming to the fore there from Squadrito. Yeah, she just got in a, herself in a good position where she could make the touch or block the pass. Quick hands there from Davison, really rushing out, trying to put them under the pump here as Manley now curtail back towards the centre of the field. And that's good pressure from the Roosters. They've just forced the pass there from Manley and a mistake as a result. Yeah, very well defended. We have uh, mentioned that they are holding on well, but that's an example of why. Just good communication and connection in defence. Ooh. Did a good job to reel that one in there, Watchman. And a real mix-up for the next play. This is where things start to break down for the Roosters. As this game has gone on, the pressure has started to mount on them, getting out of their own end. And as you can see, they're not even over the halfway line. So that could be a huge defensive set here for Manly. If they score now, there's real problems for the Chooks as they head straight towards that sideline to get the fresh players back onto the pitch. Clifford comes forward. Now Petey. Up through the middle, Jeros delivers here for Clifford. And unlike Manly here, a few mistakes starting to creep into their game. Yeah, a little bit sloppy, which they'll be disappointed about, but uh, pretty easy fixes for them, like we have mentioned numerous times. It is that little bit slippery, so you have to be just a bit extra careful with uh, your passing and, and direction and everything like that. Smith out of acting half. Clifford steps up to put on the pressure. Last play now, and they drive forward. Now, what's the rule here? I think potentially Smith might have actually been from acting half the previous play. I think that is what it was, Presto, on the money. Well, I'm happy to let it go for just a moment before they were like, hang on, that's not right. Let's go back and fix that one. So change over here for Manly, and they're absolutely dominating field position in the last five or ten minutes, but no result despite all this good... Field position they've enjoyed. Haven't scored in some time now. Works away here through McDonald. McDonald off the left foot. Straightening things. Oh, good pressure. Jamming in from the wing there from Xanthi Christopher. And another change over here. So they keep surviving the Roosters. Yeah, they're doing well. They'll be proud of this effort watching back. Hopefully the second half of this match, they can just keep doing what they're doing. 
keep getting up the field. I think they've made a couple of errors late. We haven't seen them in the opposite end for a while, but the set's going good so far. Yeah, nice straight drives here. That gets them on the right course and up over halfway easily. So now the momentum starts to build for the Chooks to Masu. Nice little roll ball. She picks it up the next play from acting half and trying to engage an offside marker there, but eventually retreating the distance was Carruthers. But not, not bad there from the Roosters. That was a much improved set from them. Next best result is getting it down to the opposite end and uh, finishing on the seven. And they've done just that. So Manly forced to work it away from their own end for the first time in a long time as we come into the second half of this match now. 14 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Diable at pace. Such a quick customer. Jeros has opened up a bit of a gap here. Promotes the footy. Quick roll ball. Jeros again an option through the middle. That's where they go. Jeros with a quick hands. Diable, what a great touch that was though. Renee Quarry saves a try. Fantastic scrambling defence, Presto. They've got to be pleased with their efforts. That's a great, great try saver. Nice little recycle of the ball as well, keeping it alive. We're looking to get the full complement of players back on the field, or at least one of them to start with. There was no one in an acting half initially. Now Demaria works it to the middle. And finally, they've got the whole six on, but no momentum to speak of. Couple more plays still here though. Nice run for court once more from acting half. So they're willing to try that play time and again here, Mark Tipple, but it hasn't really produced anything for them so far. Yeah, Ava Kewen, I think that's how you pronounce it. A young gun for the Roosters, um, taking off from half there, but just no territory. Manly are so good with their pressing defence, and that's why they're spending so much time in the in the Roosters half. Maiolo. Gives it here for Clifford and now Brittany Clifford out of acting half. Petey, quick hands. Oh, Clifford once more trying to tip it on. And they're just doing enough at the moment, the Roosters, to frustrate Manly a little bit despite the glut of possession. They can't add to that scoreline. Still three tries to nil. 13 minutes on the clock as Kewen receives it. Short passing here and now some direct drives. Much nice. Or should I say much better stuff here from the Roosters. They continue driving hard and now up over halfway. A much better set here. Into the action comes Halliwell Quinn. Here she is off the right foot, trying to evade the touch of both the Clifford sisters there, but at least one of them got up. Yeah, and mention, um, we mentioned the captain, Squadrito, number seven for the Roosters earlier. She's been really good with her strike dumps and... That's a perfect example of the kind of sets that they need to stay in this one, the Roosters. Oh, no, opportunity has gone begging there. Nicholas had open pasture plus Sammy Rogers on her outside. I was almost surprised to receive the ball on that occasion. So just over 12 remaining. Still three tries to nil. And well and truly now the next try is crucial. The Roosters can grab it, grab it themselves. Then... They're back in this contest, but for Manly, that would pretty much be the death blow. Squadrito heads towards the sideline. Now Smith, good pressure. Chiming in there from Lucy McDonald. Hallowell Quinn with a nice strong run. Coming up to meet them there was Nagy. Ooh, a little bobble there from Satcher. Play on is the call, though, to Masu. Back to Satcher. I've got to keep it alive now. I just can't do so. It's a little bit disjointed from both sides at the moment. Yeah, a little bit. It just seems like they can't execute on that strike dump on that final play right now, Presto, and that's why the score's only 3-0 to Manly. So Nagy comes forward. Rochelle Davis at pace. There's the strike dump we've been asking for. Now Diable has a chance to attack. Oh, Quick oh, hands. Oh, what oh. about the hands there from <laughs> Sammy Rogers? Diable at pace, rifled it from right to left. And Sammy Rogers, as if she's Spider-Man, traps that one in with the big mitts. We've been talking about wanting to see some execution on that strike dump, and there's few that do it better than Hannah Dyball. Absolute rocket ball. And we've been mentioning the slippery conditions. That doesn't matter when you're the best player in the world in her position. Sammy Rogers diving, two-hand catch, on the fly. What a finish. I was going to ask you, I mean, we talk about some of these greasy conditions. Is there a little 
trick of the tray that our elite touch footy players use? Is it a bit of deodorant on the hands? Is it super glue? Is it just stick it in a vat of honey? Well, as we see the Roosters attack the line at that link, and we've got it through. So they had a play through on the defender, Millie Derdovic, and uh, didn't catch the try scorer there, but the it's Roosters Emily scored Emily Irons, who's looked very good so far. Fantastic try outside the link there. So 4-1 to uh, Manly. Um, I mean, some players use that sticky spray stuff that you'll see the leagueies use. Um, one interesting thing when it's a new ball as well, and a lot of players will know this, you, you pick up your new ball in the tournament, and the first game it gets really slippery with the kind of silicony y um, texture on the top. And that might come into play here. So here comes Manly looking to hit back as the Roosters get themselves on the board for the first time. Four tries to one. Still not done with yet. Long ball over the top. Sammy Rogers is there waiting for it with arms open. And she goes down. Five tries to one now. Manly in cruise control. Yeah, pretty sure it was Sarah Petey who passed the beautiful right to left out to find Sammy Rogers for her third try of Manly's five. No stranger to crossing the try line, of course, Sammy Rogers. The interesting thing is she's probably known better for her defensive efforts as a winger. Oh, yeah, and showing that she can do it all. Her fiancé, Sam Brisby, one of the best players ever to watch. Um, retired touch player is in the box helping them as a coach now. And that's seen Manly really take a leap this year as they won Vorden Cup earlier this season. Squadredo Irons once more looking to collect her second of the match. Nearly got through. Touch right at the death there from Geros. It had to be made. Back to the seven metre mark they go now. Last play here for the Roosters. Squadredo. Long ball, but nowhere to go there for Watchman. Pretty easy stuff there for Nagy. So changeover it is now for the Seagulls. Quick hands from Petey. Jeros picks up another five or so. Petey out of acting half. And that pass was on there, but just a little bit of slippery conditions. Once more, the rain has started again here. It's almost every time Manly get the ball, it starts raining once again. Pretty much, and... You know, there wasn't too much wrong with that pass. Maybe five, ten centimetres away from being perfect. But, yeah, it goes to ground because it wasn't perfect. So less than eight minutes remaining here at Port Macquarie Regional Stadium. Five tries to one. Manly are leading their Sydney rivals here, the Roosters. Squadrito, the captain, setting things in the middle of the field. Kewen now in an acting half and then pops it back here. For Tomasiu. Kewen. Tomasiu again. Touch comes up. Last play now. Irons diving at the line hard and tracking from back on the inside. A good touch there from Taylor Clifford. Otherwise, Geros was in trouble. Yeah, and what I like about that play from the Roosters is that's exactly the play they scored on earlier. So, you know, if they haven't stopped it once, let's go back to the well. They've tried it again. And because Manly defended it better, they were up to the task. That should create options on the other side of the field. It's a nice straight drive here from McDonald. There's another crack at them. Turns it back toward the middle here for Durdovic. Now it paces Carothers. Oh, Carothers has left it behind. Here's a good opportunity now for the Roosters. And smack down there from Durdovic, a smart play from her. Yeah, smart play. And smart play from what, uh, number seven, jogging off near Squadrito. Been really good, the uh, skipper for the Roosters. Very solid in a um, what will probably be a losing effort. Jeez, you've gone off early there, Mark Tipple. Oh, they'll lose this game. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's not just a fat lady singing. You've got a whole choir of them in your head at the moment. Here they come. Satcher getting all the way through, trying to prove Mark Tipple wrong. Do it, lass. Do it. I want her to as well. Do you though? Do you actually? Well, after I've come I don't out, I what said to believe that, from you anymore. I will be the uh, Sydney Roosters or East Roosters <laughs> enemy number one. Can I suggest something to you? Right, if they somehow stage a miraculous comeback here, and look, I, I'm with you. Okay, I believe it's unlikely at this point with how much time is left in the match. <laughs> but if they do it, I want you to go to the Roosters' headquarters and borrow a cheerleader's outfit. 
wear it with the pom-poms, and then you stand on the sideline next time they play as the number one fan for the Roosters. Deal? We have a deal, yeah. Go on. Absolutely. Shake on it. There, oh, wonderful. Okay, it's on. So we got, I, there's no part of this that comes back on me, by the way. I'm completely null and void from any potential impacts here. Five minutes to go, and Mark Tipple might be in what would be close to a Sailor Moon outfit. <laughs> let's so, hope so. I don't know, let's not. <laughs> let's not hope so, actually. Davis through the middle now. Dieble once more. Tacking at the line. Clifford was there as an option. Well watched from Satcher. Part of me does want it to happen, by the way. It's not the part where I have to look. Here's <laughs> Davis on the last play now. Off it comes Maolo. Dybul has no options there. In fact, they're going to call it back here. Now, what is the referee rule? I think maybe, yeah, shoulder has been dropped in the touch here from Aaron Squadrito. So another set to come here. They weren't happy with the contact. Four and a half to play. Margin still four. So if they get an intercept here, I'll tell you what, you'll be sweating bullets. Mm. Mm. They'll need that and a bit more, but... Dival. Here she goes, trying to make sure that no one ever has to see that sight, except <laughs> maybe your partner. Well, that's not my common dress anywhere, James, so... <laughs> Who said common? <laughs> what happens behind closed doors, Mark Tipple, I don't question. Dummy here from Davis. They leave it behind. Maiolo now Diable. Quick hands to Davis. Well jammed in from the wing, though, there from Watchman. Still alive here as an opportunity. Oh, good cover once more from the middle. This time it was Siren who makes the touch. So last play now. Diable's now covered herself in mud grass, and she's just shaking her head, being like, I've done all that for nothing. Davis crabbing across field, looking to link up with a great oh. line here from Clifford. But well just tracked pulled, there. Yeah. James, you've got to say the Roosters' defence, for how much they've had to do it, has been really impressive. So credit to the girls um, on, on that one on this, in this game. I've done a great job, but still we won't get to see a sight that many are baying for, Mark Tipple, which is you in a, a very scandalous outfit, which is white, red and blue. <laughs> Up over halfway they come now. Oh, that was close to being a touch pass. Play on is the call. Kewen pops it back on the inside. And a quick roll ball too. That's nice, expansive play here. From the Chooks, so they keep heading towards the sideline. And in fact, all the way over it by the time they'd caught it, it's nearly in row two of the grandstand. Under three to play now. Manly still leading by four, five tries to one. They raced out to a 3 0 lead, and since then, really has become somewhat of an arm wrestle. It has. And credit to the Roosters. Once again, getting up the field, fine. Just can't really execute those uh, strike plays that we're looking at. On fifth touch. Carruthers and now Nicholas, and here is Petey chiming in as well. Petey has them second guessing themselves. Oh, just went behind Nagy. Was looking to add to another try to her tally. One so far in this match, and plenty for the tournament on day one. So change over here with just over two minutes remaining. Roosters on the charge, working away from their own end. Jeros comes in for the touch. Easy meters on offer here, and they keep promoting the footy. Making Nagy work hard in defence. Here comes the captain, Squadrito. James, just want to give a shout-out to uh, how good the Roosters' uniforms look. By ISC Apparel. As Squadrito out from half. Switches. Beautiful middle-middle switch. And unfortunately, Thomas Shu can't finish on that one. But yeah, um, the ISC uniforms that the Roosters have, I've got to say, potentially the number one kit in the game right now. Are you hinting that you actually want ISC to set you up with your own little version here so that you can, you know, get the pom-poms out on the sideline for the next match? Well, I mean, that's what we were uh, potentially looking at. I'm happy to bargain some sort of deal to uh, make it happen in another game later on this tournament. Oh, here we go. Splitting them all the way through is McDonald, and the Manly fans in the stands are very happy about that one. They've gone up. And six tries to one, so eventually the pressure tells an ISC if you are listening. Mark Tipper, what are your measurements? <laughs> I'll text them. Weak. <laughs> you have the platform right here. Don't you bother. Don't you, how, I mean, how are they going to get your number, honestly? They won't even decipher it. Do you, well, know, do you know ISC's number off the top of your head? ISC, proud supporter of New South Wales Touch, so yes. I'm sure I'll speak to the New South Wales Touch staff and... Get in touch with the appropriate person. 
Fine. Just like you can if you want to purchase uniforms from ISC. This message brought to you by ISC <laughs> and Mark Tibble. And of course, uh, don't forget, tomorrow is Budgie Smuggler Finals Day. So we come inside the final 10 seconds here. So a big thank you to all of our sponsors, of course, across this tournament, Hyperactive Merchandise, also doing a great job. And not to mention this wonderful stadium here, which is a great venue for touch footy. All set up by the Port Macquarie Hastings River Council. And uh, I don't want to see you in this. The ISC apparel is already enough, but skins here. It's not going to happen for you, Mark Tipple. They'll get one more crack at them, though, the Roosters. Up over halfway they come. Quick little wrap around here with Tomasio. Squadrino. Oh, oh, the intercept comes. Here goes Clifford. Rogers is looming in support. She's got oodles of pace. She'll pick up her fourth. Far too quick for the dive of Erin Squadrino. And right on the stroke of full time with the siren sounding, Rogers gets a four-bagger. What a game from Manly, showing why they are the best in the business, James, once again. Thank you for having me. I've got to jog off to uh, the opposite box, mate. We'll see you later on. I are going to say you've got to jog off to the uh, costume store so you can get prepared for next time the Roosters <laughs> play. But thank you, Mark Tipple, for joining me in commentary. Nothing silly as always, that's for sure. But at full time here, seven tries to one. The Manly Seagulls victorious over the eastern suburbs of Roosters. A game which really... Applied plenty of pressure to the white, blue and red side. But next we move to the men's open division between the red-hot Central Coast side with the likes of the Moffat boys, Ardita and Luke Kane taking on an equally stacked West Magpies lineup. With Matalitzo Masashi looking to add to a very growing tally of tries, that's for sure. Don't go too far. All the action for that match coming in five minutes' time. Live, exclusive and free on New South Wales Touch Football Facebook.